In this video you will learn what are React server components and how they differ from React server-side rendering. And I think that the topic React server-side components is exactly the same difficult like use effect when it just came out. People simply don't understand its goal and why do we need to use them at all or how to do it correctly. So what do we have now? We have a client-side rendering inside React, this is just JavaScript with React that we're rendering on the client. This is 90% of all applications that we're implementing. Secondly, we have server-side rendering. What does it mean? We simply take React and render it first on the backend with Node.js and only then on the client. So what server does, it simply generates from our React application markup and renders it on the page. And then all data, which it used to render this markup, it provides in a global window object to the client. So client can use this data and rehydrate the whole markup and data on the client side. After this we have just a client application with typical event handling, local storage and so on. And it made sense for all people who are using client server when we just need to make a client application with JavaScript and we are using server-side rendering when we want to first render application on the server. First of all, so our page is not blank at the beginning, we rendered our application. And secondly, it is really good for search engine optimization because then crawlers, like for example from Google, can check the markup of your website, which they can't really do efficiently with just a client application. So this we had previously, but now we are getting something new, which is called React Server Components, and it is not clear why do we need them at all. So first of all, React Server Components are not out yet in React itself, they are only out when they are implemented by some framework. And the only framework where you can really use it efficiently is obviously Next.js, as you can see here is an official website, here are server components that you can use directly inside Next.js and you are getting them out of the box. Which actually means, if you simply bootstrap a Next.js application, all your components by default will be server components. But the main problem is people don't really understand how to use them correctly, why do we use them and what are their benefits. This is the problem. Let's have a look what we have here. Inside my application, which is just a plain Next.js application, where I have a page.js component, you can see I have a home component. And it looks really like normal React component. But the main point is that here we directly fetch data from the API and then we render them on the screen. So we are making a scene call and then render stuff. We don't really care about showing some loader like we typically do on the client because this component is not a client React component, it's a server React component. Because any component inside Next.js by default is a server component. What does it mean? This component will only be executed on the server. This is why we can directly do some fetch requests, like for example here, render some markup, and we don't really have anything from the client inside this component. We can just make some API calls and render markup, this is it. We don't have access to local storage or session storage, you can't bind any events, and you can't even use your hooks. So essentially 90% of React is not available for you. You can simply make here API calls, write some business logic and render your pages. And I can prove that for you. If here I will write a variable user and set user, and here I want to use useState hook and we are throwing inside an empty string. When I open a page in browser where I get in an error, you are importing a component that needs your state. It only works in a client component, but none of its parent are marked with use client, so they are server components by default. What does it mean? This is a server component, we can't really use any hooks inside. So no use state, no use effect, and no React context, for example. Which actually means they are super simple. But now for sure your first question is, ok, but I really want use effect, I don't really care about server components, I want just to work on React. This is why here on the top, on the first line, we can write use client. As you can see in browser, now everything is working and we directly render all this information. So what this use client does, it makes a client component. 
I'm sorry for interruption, but I just wanted to let you know that only 20% of the people who watch my videos are subscribed to the channel. If you really want to continue getting videos and support my channel, consider subscribing, it helps a lot. Now let's jump back into the video. But here is the problem. When people hear a word server component, they understood that this is component on the server. And when they hear client component, they think that this component is executed only on the client. This is not true. Realistically, this use client approach brings back server-side rendering. This is exactly like we had Next.js previously, we have a component which can be rendered on the backend and on the client. This is why here I can open the source code of this page. And here if I copy a line from our list, as you can see I can find it here inside markup. And this means that this component was not only rendered on the client, but it was also rendered on the server. But now for sure you are even more confused because we have the server components, client components and we are rendering with use client a client component also on the server. How does it make any sense? You must understand, if we are writing that this is not use client but just a server component, we don't have here a use state hook, then it will be only rendered once. So this specific component, not the whole tree of the components, will be generated on the backend as a markup, will be rendered on the browser and additionally will be sent to our client so we can use it later if we need to. Which actually means most important difference between server-side rendering and server components is that we are talking here about granular rendering of the components and not about rendering the whole application on the server. Which actually means we can make this group of components being rendered only on the server and another group of components can be rendered on the client. And additionally to that, if you later need to update your server component, you can totally do that when you send an update of the component from server to the client. Another important point why server components are awesome, because they are not included in the bundle. When we are talking about server-side rendering, the whole page is rendered on the backend, but all these components realistically are client components, and they are bundled together in a single bundle. With server components, you can really take a part of your application and not put in the bundle, which makes your application smaller. And here is one more extremely important point to remember. Your client component can only render other client components. It can't render server components. Which actually means, at the moment when inside your tree of components you have a client component, you are done, all children of this component will also be client components. They can't really be a server component. This is why realistically the approach of refactoring an application to server components is completely different than refactoring an application with classes to React hooks. Why that? Because with React hooks you could simply take a simple small component and refactor it to the hooks and the whole application will stay the same. It is not the case with server component, you simply can't do that. You really need to go from top to the bottom and select which part of your application will be client-side rendered and which part will be server-side rendered. Obviously what you can do, you can write use client in all your components and you are good, but realistically it doesn't change anything and you are not using server components at all. This is exactly the case why React server components are still not being released inside React, simply because it is too difficult. All these bundlers must understand how to work with server components, and it is a huge code base and lots of libraries to upgrade. And here are my some closing thoughts about React server components. I don't really like them at all. Why that? I really think that React is an amazing framework and it solves creating client applications really good. But even if we are talking about server-side rendering, we don't really need it that often. I would say in 99% of the cases you don't need React at all if you have a server-rendered application. You can simply take Java, Ruby, PHP, whatever you prefer on the backend, render a part of your application with it, and only that part which really needs your client business logic you can render with React. 
it is completely possible and it worked like this for ages. And when we are talking about server components, we are trying to render parts of our components with React on the backend. Can we do that? Sure. And probably soon it will be possible and a lot of people will use such approach. Does it really make sense? For me, not really, because it doesn't change the web fundamentally. We still render something on the server, something on the client, but from my point of view, React is not the best tool to render stuff on the client. We can use the any language, make requests to the database, and be more flexible and efficient than by using React. This is why I don't really see a lot of sense in creating React server components, but maybe I am wrong and in the future everybody will use only them. And also I wanted to mention here that if you are looking for some resources or tutorials to learn React, I covered a lot of them free and paid in this video, so don't forget to check it out.